this uh, can you hear me yeah uh, this is an industry sponsored talk so this would be more or less a revision for uh, all of us clinicians the topic is timely concepts advances in basal insulin therapy Uh, if you see for the evolution of the basal insulin development from the first to second generation, uh, we first had NPH insulin in 1946. After this, NPH insulin was developed. In 1992, we had Glargine 100. After 1992, in 1996, we had insulin Detimer. In 2010, we had insulin Deglonec. And in 2011, we had Glargine U300. So our journey started from 40 IU per ml to 100 IU per ml to 300 IU per ml. If you see the actions of these basal insulins, as you can see in this slide, the NPH insulin has got a significant peak. As we advanced from our NPH insulin to the basal insulins, as you can see in this slide, from Glargine 100, to deglutec, to all these insulins, as we advance in 100 to 300 or deglutec, they become gradually peakless, and that is what actually we are interested in. Why do we need such better basal insulins? The insulins that we are in need are essentially the insulins which should give you a full day coverage, it should have a once daily injection, it should have a reduced hypoglycemia, the weight gain should be less. The dosing should be independent of the meal time. Uh, there should be improved quality of life and the patient satisfaction. And if that is there, then you have a better adherence, then you have better HbA1c controls. So when you have an effective therapy, you need to have a balance between the benefits of glycemic control and the risk of hypoglycemia. If you have a timely, effective, and stable glycemic control, You'll be able to achieve a very good HbA1c. You'll be able to achieve the targets. You'll be able to prevent the complications and lower healthcare utilization. You'll have less restrictive regimens. This would actually help in improving the adherence and the quality of life. When we talk of low risk of hypoglycemia, patients will be comfortable in taking insulin because they feel they won't be going into hypo. It would allow the optimal titration of the dosages and it would improve the adherence and consequently the, it would reduce, re, result in reduced mobility and the healthcare resource utilization. The Glargine U300, this insulin has got many trials uh, with them and we all have been using very routinely this since many years. So it's a rob insulin with a ro very robust evidence which is with us. This Glargine U300 demonstrated the lower risk of any time and nocturnal hypoglycemia. So that's very important. You don't want a nocturnal hypoglycemia, you don't want any time hypoglycemia. So the advantage of this uh, Glargine U300 is that you have a 48% lower annualized rate versus Glargine 100 units per ml. Not only that, but you have 23% lower annualized rate versus Glargine 100 units per ml. If you compare the efficacy of Glargine 300 versus your first generation uh, basal uh, Glargine 100 insulin. There was 16 week randomized crossover study with 59 type uh, 2 diabetes, uh, type 1 diabetes patients using CGM during the last weeks of the eight, each week, eight week period. It very clearly showed that your Glargine 300 improves the glycemic variability irrespective of our injection timings. It has got a very good, wonderful, smoother profile, 24 hour smoother profile and you have 55% lesser lower nocturnal or severe hypoglycemia. And obviously you had a similar HbA1c reduction with Glargine 300 uh, as uh, with Glargine uh, 100. In type 1 diabetes mellitus, demonstrating the lower variability with Glargine 300 versus insulin degradic 100 with 24 hours euglycemic lamps. These studies also very clearly showed that you have a 22% greater insulin peak with insulin uh, degradic compared with Glargine 300. And you have a 23% lesser within-day variability with Glargine 300 compared to insulin deglutide. 
So you don't want the insulin to peak fast. So in that way, uh, this 300 units per ml is a better insulin. And similarly, you don't want the intraday variability. So in both ways, this insulin spread better. Then if you compare the two generation two insulins, head to head comparison, there was a bright study, which was a multi-central, open label, one is to one, randomized, active control, uh, two arm parallel group, non inferiority study in patients with uncontrolled type 2 diabetes mellitus. The eligible patients had more than 18 years. They had uh, type 2 diabetes of more than one year. Their HB1C was between 7.5 to 10. They uh, had BMI between 25 to 40. And uh, they had OADUs, plus or minus GLP1 RA, but they were stable in the last three months. Those patients were only included. There was no prior insulin use. The treatment period was 24 weeks. The titration target was fasting uh, SMPG of around 80 to 100 milligram per deciliter without hypoglycemia. The starting dose was routine, 0 0.2 uh, units per kg as per the labeling. And glargine 300 was given once daily. Degludec was also given once daily, 10 units as per the labeling. The initial active titration was 0 to 12 weeks and subsequently from 30 to 24 weeks. Now, this study very clearly showed that both these insulins, 300 and 100, they had significant comparable improvement in the glycemic control. Not only that, but the advantage of this insulin compared to the other one was that there was a lower risk of hypoglycemia during the titration period. Because if you have a hypoglycemia when you're titrating, patients won't stick to your regimen and they would like to leave the insulin. So there's an advantage that this insulin offered to us. And because you have less hypoglycemia, when you're titrating the stuff, you have less rate of treatment discontinuation. So it would offer an advantage in, in hypoglycemic risk reduction compared to Diglodec as, uh, uh, so that patients would stick to your insulin more. Then there was a study called Bright Elderly of more than 70 years, which also very clearly showed that there's a greater HB1C reduction compared to the insulin Diglodec 100 as uh, compared to this uh, 100. Now the, in pregnancy, we all know that this is now quite safe in pregnancy. And uh, it was examined using the post-marketing pharmacovigilance data, cases from some 44 countries. And uh, these uh, were 246 exposures to GLA-300 during pregnancy. The reporting rate for the pregnancy lactation related cases were 31.1 per 1 million patient years. Rates of spontaneous abortions and the congenital anomalies were low and consistent with the general population. So it was concluded that use of glargine 300 during pregnancy was not associated with specific adverse events or with congenital anomalies. And the results suggest that there are no safety issues with use of glargine 300 during pregnancy. A large number, more than 1,000 retrospective and prospective pregnancy outcomes with glargine of exposed pregnancies from the post-marketing surveillance indicates that there are no specific adverse effects from pregnancy and it can be used very safely. So the evidence is very robust for glargine 300 across all the patient profiles. Whether you have a patient profile who is BZ erratic, who has got at risk of hypoglycemia, who has at risk of glycemic variability, patients who has type 1, who is having CKD, elderly pregnancy, all profiles you can use very safely and uh, with a very lesser doses compared to other basal insulins. And you have a dosing flexibility of plus or minus 3 hours. So when you have this dosing flexibility, you have a stable glycemic profile with an extended duration of action. So that makes this insulin very much versatile to use. And you have a six hour injection time window. Advantage of this insulin is that you have a dedicated uh, uh, replaceable cartridge. You have a dose range of zero to 80 units and you have 450 units in one cartridge. So it's very easier for us to try it. Cost also comes a little bit less. And you, obviously you have a one unit dose adjustment. And you have a short dial extension, hold time of 5 seconds, and when your insulin is over, it will automatically, the dial won't move forward. So that's an advantage of uh, using uh, these newer insulins. So with this, I finish the talk. Thanks for the patient hearing.